A lot of people on the internet are critically asking, why would LEGO make this Star Wars diorama series? The Trench Run, Dagobah, and the Trash Compactor? Why make that? I disagree. I want to tell you why these three sets are perfect for adults to begin their collection. Hey Cool Cats, my name's Champ. No, I mean it's actually Champ, hence the moniker. I started collecting and building LEGO in the last few months, and the hobby has changed the landscape of my leisure time, my office, and my imagination. Starting a LEGO collection is an organic process. You buy a set, you build it, and you buy nine more and repeat the process. With increasing joy and satisfaction, I might add. Veterans of LEGO know this, but the new collectors of the hobby need a starting point. For me, the starting point was this set. Luke Skywalker's X-Wing Fighter, set number 75301. For the brand new collector who's nervous about jumping into the vast catalog of current models and the hundreds of retired sets, where should you begin? The dioramas. First off, what are the dioramas? LEGO announced three new sets based on the original trilogy. Now, if you're a prequel kid or a Clone Wars kid, these might not be for you, but I suggest that LEGO knows that. More on that later. So there are three. The Trash Compactor Diorama, the Death Star Trench Run Diorama, and the Dagobah Jedi Training Diorama. Now what makes these sets unique and perfect for a new LEGO creator is that three's three features. Number one, they are 18 plus. Number two, there's a variety of build types. And number three, the quote tiles. You can order all three today from LEGO or Amazon and they'll ship out April 26. But that's uh, just under a month from the time of recording. But if you want to jump in and scratch the itch, I recommend one of these three sets. Luke Skywalker's X-Wing Fighter, the Imperial TIE Fighter, or Boba Fett ship. They range between $35 and $50 and are modest builds that are like, kind of like the Goldilocks of piece count and difficulty. But I digress. You have patience. And here's why I believe the dioramas are perfect to begin your collection. But why? Who's this set for? Look at the people in these photos. They are not children or even young adults. No 24-year-old has this sweet gray beard. These sets are for adult adults with disposable income. I would even argue these are for adults who figured out who they are, what they like, and they like exploring the things that bring them joy. Notice also the minimalist homes or offices in the photos. These sets are small and they're less than six inches tall. They aren't meant to be the centerpiece of a room. They're meant as an accent just as your memories of childhood are accents to your adult life. And when displayed together, they can even retell the bigger story in vignette form, not unlike your life and memories. In short, these sets are meant for an adult collector who already has shelves of stuff and wants new good stuff to put on those shelves. Each of these sets has a unique build type to explore, miniature vehicles, architecture, and a minifigure playset. Let's take a look. The Dagobah Jedi Training Diorama. This set's getting all the love out there. And I think it's really good. It shows off the natural side of what LEGO sets can do. The water is built with various patterns and layers of transparent tiles. The set comes with three minifigures that embody the scene. Yoda, of course. He's a short figure. Luke looking all pensive. And the muddy R2-D2 pushed the idea of a dirty swamp scene. The set is small and everything is cramped together. And, but that claustrophobia works well to illustrate the scene. Dagobah felt claustrophobic and messy. Building structures is an iconic part of the Lego building system, and although Yoda's hut is small, it's packed with tiny details to spark the flickers of memory. A bed, a pot, even a tiny lightsaber. Shh, no spoilers. Notice all the curves and the organic forms from the geometric pieces. This is where most adults will feel out of touch with their memory of Lego. Back in my day, Lego was all 90 degree pieces except for the four slope tiles you used to build the roofs. Lego's come a long way since the 80s. The foundation for the entire set is this clean black base that frames the scene and the movie quote tile. Do or do not, there is no try. This is a famous quote I still say to myself when I face a challenge. It's a core memory of childhood and a perfect choice. The next set is the Death Star Trench Run. I am very excited about this set. This is not a popular opinion on the internet. Many detractors feel the set is just too small for LEGO. The TIE Fighters seem insignificant at this scale, but I'm focused on the Death Star detail. This set gives a new collector the chance to build some models, albeit micro scale, and exploring texturing with the Death Star wall sections. Scale is the thing here. Remember there were I don't know, 30 one-man fighters assaulting a moon-sized battle station? Those X-Wings were tiny and insignificant. That's the point of the scene. This set captures that memory. It has ample detail in the greebling, which is uh, greebling for new to the hobby fans. This was a George Lucas invented word for any insignificant detail that had no proper name. It was used extensively here on the trench run and in the opening scene at the bottom of the Star Destroyer when it comes flying across. That model had thousands of tiny plastic bits of existing models just stuck onto its hull to create that chaotic tech texture. I can't wait to build this Death Star Trench. 
Now here, a new collector could experience minimal spectrum of LEGO modeling. We always get excited about the big sets, but what about appreciating the other side? And if a collector likes this, then consider the gateway into other LEGO sets or starships and vehicles with bigger sets that has greebling on the hulls the way the walls of the Death Star do in this. Lastly, we have the black frame and the plaque. The force is strong with this one. You heard it in his voice, didn't you? Yeah, me too. The third set is the Death Star Trash Compactor. This is my favorite of the three sets. This is the one that made me order all three on the first day. This set is all about the minifigures. The characters are the set as much as the walls that threaten them. The set without them is just a box. They are the focal point of the entire build, and that's the strength of the set. Some LEGO collectors could care less about the vehicle building or the environment. All they care about is the minifigures. And this set has an extensive cast. Han, Chewbacca, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and the secret figures on the other side of the door. R2-D2 and C-3PO trying to get inside. All five of the core good guys minus the wise old Ben Kenobi. Don't feel bad for old Ben. He's getting his own show this summer. This set focuses on the figures in a playset environment, not a structure. Many LEGO sets follow this pattern, although usually at a lower price point. Now contrast that to the Dagobah set. The hut, the swamp, the water, and the X-Wing could stand alone without the figures, not the trash compactor. This model feels so good. The colors, the chaos, the playset feature. The walls move. I know. I know. The black frame is especially well suited for this build, and the plaque is Han Solo's iconic quip. One thing's for sure, we're all going to be a lot thinner. So Han. I believe those plaques are the real gem of the diorama series for a new collector, because these Lego sets aren't just toys. They're memories. Memories that you have the opportunity to build and share. This is a unique feature of Lego, in that Lego bricks allow for two parts of your memory to converge. As an adult, you could buy a toy from your past, vintage or new. My wife and I love rediscovering some object from our childhood home in an antique store on a random media post. But LEGO improves this idea by combining the subject of the memory, an X-Wing for example, into the form of another fond and accessible memory, LEGO bricks. You literally build the memories into a model that you can view, display, and share with others. It's an amazing synergy of ideas and physical sensations that is indescribably satisfying. The shifting of those loose pieces under your fingertips, the clicking of two bricks together, and the creation of something creative from the ordered chaos of those loose parts is nothing short of magic. And when you complete the set, you can display it to remind yourself of the memory, or better, share it with a friend or a coworker. They've got a Star Wars memory too. You wait, they will tell you. So adult aesthetic, variety of build types, and the shared memories are why I think these dioramas are a great entry point into the Lego hobby. Next, you'll be building more complex sets across your interest in whatever themes Lego makes. You'll find your way. Keep me posted, I wanna hear about it. So which memory are you most excited about? Tell me in the comments which set is your favorite and which you plan to try. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching all the way to the end. It means a lot to me. If you want to hang out more, I'm Actually Champ. I stream on Twitch every Thursday and Sunday from 7 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. I build LEGO on stream. Links and descriptions below. All right, let's do the countdown. In three, in two, in one. Number three, LEGO's a big world, and there's a place for you in it. Number two, don't feel weird about it. Try a set out, and I promise you'll enjoy the experience. How you feel will be the guide for where you go next. And number one. Make a memory for someone, today. Do something nice, call someone you need to talk to. Be awesome or kind to someone who needs your help. You're great and you can share that too. Have a great day, cool cats. I'll see you next time.